Hey everybody, it's TypeScript time. And today I want to talk with you about switch statements because you can actually hurt yourself if you don't use the cases properly with a break statement or a return statement. And I will show you what are these problems, how you can avoid them, and also how TypeScript can help you to never forget about a return or break statement in your cases. Because breaks are important in life and in TypeScript as well. So let's get into it. For the sake of this demo, I created a function called handle event. And in handle event, I have a parameter called event type that can be of error, info, or warning. So I have a union here with this literal types of error, info, and warning. And in case there's an error, we will handle the error. In case there is an info, we inform the user. And in case of warning, we'll do a console warning to warn our user. I will call handle event with warn. So when it reaches our switch case statement, it will go into the warn case and print a warning on the console. As always, I will prove that to you by running the code from the terminal. I will use the development dependency TS node to execute my switch case TypeScript code. And as promised, we see here now the warning for our user. That looks all right. So where's the problem now? Well, let's see what happens if we supply info. I give info now here as the event type. And when I execute my code again, I will see an info, but also a warning. And it gets even worse when I do the same with error. So when executing handle event with error, we'll see a console error statement and the info plus the warning. In technical terms, we call this a false through case. When we supply the error, we will hit the error case, but then our code will continue with info in the warning. So it will start with the first case that it matches and then continue with the execution statements of all the other cases. I will prove that to you by just changing the order here. So I will have error as the second case, and then there will be the console error and console warning directly after one another. So we will also see just two now, the handle error and the warn user log statements. The big question is now how to fix this false rule in the switch case statement. And we can fix it by using a break statement because the break statement will stop the current loop. It will terminate the case here of the error and then hold on with going to the further cases. Let's see what happens. So I have to break now here and we will see that we will get stopped after the console error statement with handle error. We can achieve the same by using return. Returning will also prevent our code from continuing with other cases. So here we will again be stopped with handle error. Since my code is not returning anything useful, I will stick with the break. So let's add the break to the error case, the warn case, and also the info case. We have fixed our error prone switch case construct but we have to remember to put in the break statements. So if we forget about them, it can still come to errors. Fortunately, TypeScript has a type checking feature for us in place. So let's check our TypeScript config file because in here we can set up a compiler option that is called no fall through cases in switch. By setting it to true, we will enable this feature. And then when we go back to our switch case file here, we will see that TypeScript warns us if we remove a break statement. It will tell us that there is a false through case in our switch block that might cause some errors later on. Some of you might know such type checking features from a linter like TSLint or ESLint. Let me just quickly visit the ESLint pages for a fall through case check. So if I open here the ESLint docs, then we'll see that they also have the capability to catch these kind of problems. This is especially useful when you want to check that also with plain JavaScript, but we have TypeScript at hand, so we can use our no false through cases in switch compiler option. Here is one bonus tip from me as we are learning how to improve our switch case statements. I like to put my cases into curly braces cases, curly braces, yeah, that rhymes pretty well. <laughs> because 
when we create curly braces around our statements here, then we create a new scope. Let me show that to you with a variable called text. When I take this text here and I put it into a variable and then lock it to the console, then this variable is only available in the scope of the curly braces. I will remove the curly braces now to show you a counter example. So if I don't have the curly braces, then everything will be handled as one scope. So if I have then two times a text variable, I will get to see an error because I cannot redeclare the variable text. So I have to create multiple block scopes and this can be done using the braces. So I will wrap my first statement here again into curly braces and then I will put the rest of the handling code in here and then I will also create braces around the statements in the error case and then uh, also for the statements of the one case. This is the best practice because this will allow me to have multiple variables using the same name here within their own scopes. As always, if you like my video, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my TypeScript TV channel because I'm doing this free of charge, I'm doing it in my spare time and it would motivate me to see that you can make use of it and that it supports you. So if you think this was a good video, then please let me know and we will probably see us then in the next one.